Good morning all. Time to resurrect, I think, the PWM5 solar charge controller. So this was an electronics project um, which started off actually on Vero board. Here is one of the very early prototypes uh, in a very different sort of layout. But then this became a product and I started selling it and it didn't make a lot of money if I factored in my own uh, labor costs. In fact, I think it barely made a profit at all. So it was more a labor of love, but I did end up manufacturing about 900 of these things. Uh, this one has its cover removed, so you can see the components inside. Uh, when I eventually stopped manufacturing this, I think after about four years of manufacturing, what I did was I open sourced um, both the circuit, but that was um, public domain anyway, but I also open sourced the firmware inside the microcontroller. But uh, what hasn't happened, and in some ways I'm a bit disappointed about this really, is that nobody's actually picked up this design and started manufacturing it. I mean, I'd quite like to see these things coming out of China for a couple of dollars each. And, you know, that's my fault really. The schematic has only ever existed as this rather tatty piece of paper. Uh, there is a scan of this on my website. I'll put a link to that in the description. There's also um, a link, I'll put a link to uh, the code listing, which is also on my website. So what I want to do now is I want to redraw the schematic using a proper schematic uh, capture, they call it, don't they? Schematic drawing package and also design a PCB to turn this unit from a through hole design into a surface mount design. Now you may just be able to see on this uh, schematic that I had been playing with surface mount versions of this. You can see that uh, there's a surface mount dual diode there to replace a couple of these diodes and you can actually uh, replace these two diodes with uh, a SOT23 dual diode as well. Um, I've got the pinout for the surface mount versions of the 2N3904 and 2N3906. So that was certainly on my mind. And uh, I also want to redo the printed circuit board. Now, because I'm going from through hole to surface mount, uh, this thing should get a lot smaller. In fact, it, it should end up being really quite tiny. Um, even as a, a through hole PCB, it's not absolutely enormous. I mean, here's a two pound coin uh, to use as a comparison, so it's not much bigger than that. In fact, the original uh, circuit board really grew up as a replacement for the original Vero board layout. It started life on Vero board. This one's slightly oversized because this is um, one of my development prototype units that I had a switch on there to be able to switch different uh, elements of software in just to test them. But the layout on the Vero board was really just copied onto the back of this. Let's flip this over. You can see that this layout is actually quite Vero boardy. Um, you've got strips of uh, holes and pads in long lines, which just sort of copied from the original Vero board layout. And then of course, where I needed things to take slightly different routes, I think there was a wire link on the original Vero board uh, running across there. Of course, I ran a track on the printed circuit board version. So for this redesign to surface mount, I did a while ago make a couple of sketches of a sort of hybrid board, which was part surface mount, surface mount components on the back. You can see there, there's a surface mount eight pin microcontroller and the transistors, resistors and capacitors. But I retained some of the um, through hole components on the top, mainly because I had large numbers of them. And that's why I was coming up with this sort of hybrid design. But I think um, the design I'm going to do now is gonna dispense with the through hole components altogether the uh, MOSFET there can go to a, a D2 pack, I think it's called, uh, sort of surface mount type. The voltage regulator will be surface mount and the LED and all the remaining components. But first things first, uh, the very first thing I'm going to do in this redesign is to draw the schematic in proper schematic software. And the software I'm going to use is Easy EDA. So this is uh, Easy EDA, it's at easyeda.com. And I've chosen this software really for two reasons. One, it's easy. And secondly, you design online. 
so that I can make these designs, the schematic and the PCB, uh, publicly available. So let's have a, a little look at this uh, front page and just see what's on here. So we've got powerful PCB layout and simulation capability, schematic capture, uh, SPICE circuit simulator, online PCB design, and you can import PCB and schematic files. Um, you can develop collaboratively. This is the thing I was particularly interested in, so that I can make these designs available and people can create modifications to these designs. Uh, open source hardware, share your schematics and PCB. This particularly interested me. Now, you can have a play with this software even without creating an account. Um, you can just simply say, well, try Easy EDA now or New Project. They both do the same thing. And that takes you to the Easy EDA editor. So what I thought I'd do now is just get some of the uh, components that are on my schematic actually in to the beginnings of a schematic uh, in this software. Right, so let's create uh, a new schematic. I won't uh, attempt to start doing a PCB at this stage. So new schematic. And uh, it brings up a drawing template, I suppose you could call it. And now I'm going to start actually dropping some components in. But before I do, let's just have a quick look back at my paper schematic. Uh, so what I thought I'd do is I'd just do this um, section here, which is a potential divider from the battery voltage VBAT to ground, zero volts. Uh, it's got an 82K resistor and a 20K resistor. And I might as well just drop in this 220 picofarad capacitor as well. So let's do that in Easy EDA. Right, now I've had a little bit of a play with this program, um, and I'm just going to go through the basics now. I don't know a great deal, but let's just uh, zoom into my drawing a little bit. So to get a resistor in, we can simply click on the resistor there and then click on the drawing and there's a resistor. Now we need two resistors. Um, while it's hovering under my cursor, I can press R to rotate that resistor and I want it in the vertical direction. So let's click another one in there. And those are my two resistors. Now the floating resistor here I can get rid of by just right clicking. Um, now the other component I wanted, actually if I select that, can I rotate it? Yes I can, that's nice and easy. You rotate by just pressing uh, the R key on your keyboard. So let's now grab a capacitor. Um, I want to rotate that and drop it in approximately there. And then I'll right click to get rid of the uh, floating capacitor. And those are my components. So now I want to link them together with bits of wire. So to do that, um, there's a little palette here of wiring tools. Now this one looks like just regular wire. It's called wire, so let's grab that. And I want to link the bottom of uh, R1 to the top of R2. Click that. And then I want to link from the position between those two resistors down to the top of capacitor C1. So it's that simple. Right click to get rid of that cursor. Easy. Now the other thing I need is a ground. So let's pick this uh, ground symbol and I'll pop that down there. Uh, right click to get rid of that floating ground symbol. Let's just, right, rolling the uh, mouse wheel zooms in and out. Uh, right dragging means you can move around on the drawing. Uh, now I also want VCC. Now I've got it on my drawing as VBAT because it's the battery voltage. Uh, I'm not sure whether I can change the name. I probably can. So let's just use VCC. It's in those wiring tools. So that's my VCC. Now I need some more wire. So let's click the wire, connect that to the top of R1. Okay, so that's VCC hooked up. Another wire connected to uh, the bottom of R2 and down to ground. And finally, I want a wire from the bottom of C1 down to the bottom of R2. So that, I think, is the first stage. Oh, I need to change these component values, don't I? OK, let's do that. Um, so let's click on R1. Now up here on the top right, that's in as a 1K. 
and I know that that needs to be uh, 82k. R2, yep, that's changed, uh, is 20k. So 20k. Now I'm not entirely sure at this stage whether these are just names or actual values, but I'm sure all will become apparent later on. And C1 was 220p, wasn't it? So up here, instead of one microfarad, 220, uh, 220 picofarads. And uh, that's it. All the component values are now correct. So yeah, that's this section here with the 82k, the 20k, and the 220 picofarad, ground or zero volts, and VBAT uh, in my drawing. So I'm going to stop there because I want to do the bulk of the uh, schematic design in my own time and not live on camera because despite my many years in electronics I'm really a total beginner at um, doing software schematics and software PCB designs. I haven't really done much of it at all. Now of course transferring from through hole to surface mount brings up a few issues. Um, I identified that two of these 1N4 and 4 8 could be replaced by what's that uh, a BAV99 and I think these ones uh, which are common anode can be replaced with a BOR56 I'm pretty sure it's that. Uh, the 2N3904 and 3906 become MMBT3904 uh, and 3906 so that's fine. Surface mount pick is available. Uh, one of the difficulties is going to be with this LP2950 because this is a through hole, um, low dropout, but also very low quiescent current, five volt voltage regulator. And I still haven't really identified a suitable replacement uh, surface mount version of this, which has that very low quiescent current. Certainly the 1117 is not going to cut it. Um, the IRF3205 MOSFET is available as an IRF3205S surface mount version in a D2 pack, which is eh, roughly the same size as the original MOSFET, but kind of with the tab cut off and the uh, pins coming out and bent down. So it just sits on the surface of the board. Um, not quite sure about the transorb or the transient suppression diode yet. And the external Schottky diode does require some special attention. And that diode is this one here, this uh, diode actually in the yellow wire. And I made it external because if you were using this solar charge controller with a panel that already had an anti-backfeed diode in it, then you don't really need this diode. And the idea was that you could cut the wires here and uh, this solar charge controller would then have no anti-backfeed diode. But I am now thinking of alternatives to this because even though this is a Schottky diode, it still has a voltage drop and at 6 amps it does get quite warm. In fact it gets almost untouchably warm, about 100 degrees I seem to remember. And uh, that's where these things come in. These are the ideal diodes that I bought uh, some time ago. There's very diff various different types of these and uh, because these use MOSFETs it should mean that there's no voltage drop uh, across the ideal diode. Of course these things would have to be connected uh, two wires to both these wires and then the solar panel coming in here. But these provide um, uh, a volt dropless diode um, by using MOSFETs. So I want to be able to offer three options. No diode at all, if of course there's one already in the solar panel. Um, a Schottky diode, which you can insert into the solar panel side of the controller quite easily, but that will get warm. Or the ideal diode. So there we are. I've kind of uh, taken my first step to redesigning the PWM5 as a surface mount uh, solar charge controller. Let's get rid of this through hole version. Uh, I've taken the first tentative steps to uh, relaying out my schematic using proper online schematic uh, design software. And uh, when that's done, I can redesign the through hole printed circuit board um, as a surface mount printed circuit board. And uh, at the same time as making all of this public, um, the schematic, the firmware is public and also the PCB design will be public domain. I'd really welcome your feedback. So 
in the later stages when I'm trying to, for example, source surface mount replacements for the through hole components, I'd really welcome your suggestions for uh, components, uh, component numbers or part numbers or whatever it happens to be. Yes, I'd really uh, like this to be a sort of two way uh, communication. So I'll be back with uh, more videos on the redesign of the uh, PWM5 when it gets uh, difficult. Of course, when it gets difficult, it gets interesting. Um, and we hopefully will take this right through to the final uh, conclusion of the PWM5 being a much smaller and surface mount product. Cheerio.